Who is your target audience? And this is where we want to slowly pick up on the symbols. You see the circles, the concentric circles? You begin to understand that we are working with different circles and in each purpose we have a particular task, each purpose we have a particular objective and each purpose we have a particular life component. So the target audience in outreach, who would it be? The community. The community outside, right? The community, you're, you're not far off brother, but the community outside. When you invite them to church, they don't become believers immediately. When you invite them to a coffee, when you invite them to an evangelistic crusade, invite them to a concert, they don't become believers immediately. But as soon as they come into your purview, they're connected with you, you have their phone number, you've shaken their hand, now they become crowd. So what do you do with the community? You do evangelism. They don't know the Lord. Then they come into the crowd. What do you do with the crowd? You do worship. You do worship. So the life component is my witness to the community. The life component is my worship to the crowd. What is the crowd watching? When they come, when you bring your unbelieving friends, loved ones, when you bring your family to just where the church gathers, everybody comes. Sometimes even the devil shows up there, sits in the second row. Right? Everybody comes and everybody's welcome. Jesus spoke to the crowds. He spoke to the multitudes. Great, fantastic. So when you're doing that, we worship and we exalt and we lift up and we speak out the wonderful things. David says, I will give testimony in the general assembly. He says, I will give testimony. I'll speak of the great things of God in the general assembly. Everybody come listen to what I have to say about God. So our worship exalts the Lord and it is a witness even in the crowd. Is that the church? Answer, no. That is not the church. At this point, I want to make a slight distinction. So here's where you want to ask the question. Do you want unbelievers to come to your Sunday morning service? Do you want unbelievers? So it's a strategy issue. The question is, what are you doing and what is the purpose of that event? Okay. So for me, my Sunday morning is for the crowd. Bring in the crowd. And my home group or small group is for discipleship. So that's where the church is. So don't look at the crowd and say, see what kind of church has got all sorts of smokers and, and you know, all sorts of people and where, you know, where sometimes they come, sometimes they don't come, no commitment level. Some are worshipping, some are not worshipping. You, know. you, you don't look at the crowd, the janta, and say that's the church. You look at the worshippers who are following Acts chapter 2 verse 42 to 47. Following. Devoted. Apostles teaching. What? Breaking of bread prayer. Those are the believers. And if you're going to allow unbelievers on Sunday morning, you're going to have to make some adjustments. Because when the guests come home, you do act differently. You're a little bit more hospitable, loving. You give them the best seats in the house. You, you, you take care of them. So there's some change. And we'll talk about that later. But at this point, I want you to know the difference. Because I come from a background a church background where Sunday morning was for believers. Then we had Sunday evening, which was the gospel meeting. Okay? And few of us will come and we'll bring one unbeliever from the street. And he'll come in from the street. And we'll all sit and everybody knows who the unbeliever is. Because we're all looking at him like this, waiting for him to repent. And then the preacher preaches. We've done the worship, preacher preaches, and we're all looking at him. You know, and that's how we grow. I'm like, poor guy. And then I asked, have we never asked the question why none of them ever come back? <laughs> ever. So you rethink, you rethink. If a guest comes to your home, a guest comes to your restaurant, you want them to come back, right? Until they feel your love, until they feel the connection, feel the community, and they'll say, I want to be part of this. And here's a psychology that you have to understand even more with Indians than anybody else. Okay? Here's where I often ask the question, why do people fall in love first and then get married? You know? Because India says you get married and then you fall in love. That's called arranged marriage. But over here we want to fall. And people fall in love. 
And, and I, I tell my, my young people, I don't tell them enough, but I tell them my young people, say don't, don't invest too much into the relationship because then you'll begin to fall for the person. And if you haven't put, if it's an unbeliever or whatever, you haven't, they begin to develop a relationship, then affection, and then after that they're ready to make any changes to their, uh, any changes to their life in order to get married to that person because now they want to know, they, want, they know that they want to be with that person. Wow. So relationship comes before belief. Relationship comes before belief. People come into your community and they first decide, do I even want to be part of these people? Or they step and say, oh, me and Jesus is okay. I don't want to be part of it. The church is hypocritical. The church is legalistic. The church is, you see what I'm saying? So if we are to be a people that have open arms and want crowds to come, crowds to stay, we need to ask the question, what is our service like? And we'll talk about that later. But this is where the change of the purpose, where evangelism to the community, worship in the crowd, and then we move to the next one, which is, uh, uh, which is um, congregation. Okay, so you got congregation, committed, uh, and core. In the life components, you got my witness, my worship, because we're going to unpack all of these. I'm not wasting any more time on this. My walk and my work. What's the basic human need that we're meeting in each of the three, each of the circles? Number one, the purpose to live for. God has have a, has a purpose for your life. Power to live on. God has given you His presence and His promises. People to live with. God has given you a family. Principles to live by. God has given you His word and instruction. And finally, pro, uh, profession. What am I living for? What am I what am I doing with my life? You got it, right? The church purpose or the church provides the ministry to each of these people. You provide a focus for living in evangelism. You provide a force for living uh, in worship. You provide a family for living. You provide a foundation for living and a function for living. What about your emotional benefits? What do you get emotionally in the community? You get significance. Jesus gives you a new identity. You get stimulation. Worship lifts you up into the presence of God. You get support because you've got family. You get stability because you've got teaching and instruction. You get service because you are able to show your own love to people through ministry. That's an amazing grid right there. Talking about how to communicate your purposes. So what do you communicate to the community? Come on. What do you communicate to the community? Yeah, witness. It's Jesus is Lord. He loves you. Come to Christ. Right. You don't say that in your small group. Right. Hopefully you don't have to say that. And then what do you say to the crowd? What do you communi communicate to the crowd? Worship. Exalt the Lord. What do you communicate to the congregation? Fellowship. Family. We are loved. We are together. We are with each other. We belong. What do you communicate to the, uh, to the, uh, to the committed people? Maturity, discipleship, walk with Jesus, change your ways, love God, look more like Christ. All right, what do you communicate to the core? Ministry, come on, get involved, find your shape, let's serve. What do you want to do for, for, for Jesus, right? So with every different circle, you change your focus, you change your ministry, and you, you're communicating. What have we been talking about? Communicating your purpose. You don't go to the community and tell them all five purposes. You don't go <laughs> and tell them all. So as they come in, you move them in baby steps of commitment to uh, the core, all right?